Welcome back to another video and today we'll be covering a tracing problem from inheritance. So these problems are kind of tricky and hard to keep track of. So we will go through the whole code, try to understand the logics and draw our own tracing table, which is already drawn here, but I will explain why we do it like this. So initially we have two classes, class A and class B. So class B extends class A. So that means class B is a child, class A is the parent. Okay, so that means that we need two separate tables, one for class A and another one for class B. Okay, so uh, let's just go through the code. So initially, class A has three variables. One of them is a static one. So static variable tem, two variables sum and y. And it has a constructor where we do not have any new variables. So nothing to do here. And we have a method. A method takes two parameters m and n and has another variable called x so that's why we have another column for x okay so moving on class b so this table is basically for class b here and class b it extends a so static int x so x sum and it has two constructors one takes a parameter and another one doesn't so <coughs> and so the first constructor that doesn't have any parameters so it doesn't have any new variables so nothing to declare here however the second one the one with the parameter has this column so for b1 and it has a method uh, call call method b that has two parameters m and n and inside of the method we have another variable called y and that's about it and this is like the main method and now the tracing table so in the main method we can see you are creating three objects a1 b1 and b2 so a1 is basically this one this is for b1 and b2 so these two tables are basically for the construct uh, for the parent class so whenever we are creating objects of the child we initially go to the parent run the parents code the constructor then come to the child class and do whatever we need to do so these two tables are basically for the for the parent class and this is basically for whole class b and this is for b1 and this is for b2 so let's just dive into the code and see how things work so initially we look into the main method where a a1 equals to new a so we are creating a object of class a so temp equals to 4 sum is initially 0 y 0 and we run the constructor of a which is y equals to temp minus 2 so temp y is 2 sum equals to temp plus 1 that's 5 temp is 2 we go to the main method again now b b1 equals to new b so as I said before, we need to go to the parent class. We went to the parent class. So S temp is a static variable, nothing to do here. Sum 0, Y0. Uh, we run the constructor. Y equals to temp minus 2. So temp is 2. Y would be 0. Sum equals to temp plus 1. So that would be sum is 3. Temp minus equal to. So temp is 0 now. Now we come to class B. In class B, we have static variable x, so starts with 0, sum is 0, and we go to the default constructor that doesn't take any parameters. So y goes to temp plus 3. So y, so class B doesn't have any y's, it goes up to the parent's y, right? So we go up, we go here, and we do y goes to temp plus 3. So y equals to temp is 0 plus 3 that would be 3. Then we do sum equals to temp 3 plus temp plus 2. Do we have sum for class B? Yes we do. So sum equals to 3 plus temp is 0 plus 2 so that's 5. Then temp minus equal to so temp becomes minus 2. Now we look into the next line which is b, b2 equals to new b which passes a parameter b1, the object that we created just now. So as I said before, we go to the parent class 
and in the parent class we have sum is 0 y is 0 run the constructor y equals to temp minus 2 so temp is minus 2 minus 2 that would be minus 4 sum equals to temp plus 1 so sum is minus 1 and temp becomes minus 4 okay now we go to class b so class b sum is 0 static variable x we do not in, uh, initialize it again and as it has a parameter we go to this constructor where we pass on b1 so b1 here and sum equals to b1 dot sum so sum equals to b1 dot sum b1 dot sum was 5 so we put 5 here and x equals to b1 dot x so b1 dot x was 0 and it would be 0 again so b1 dot method b we pass on 2 and 3 so we come here method b 2 and 3 passed y is 0 y equals to y plus this y so y this y means go to the parent parent is 3 so that becomes 3 okay then x equals to this y so this y is the y here plus 2 so 3 plus 2 that's 5 plus temp temp is minus 4 so that's 1 so x becomes 1 now we pass on 1 and 3 to method a 1 and 3 to method a okay so in method a x equals to 0 y equals to y plus m so y is 3 plus m is 1 that's 4 plus stem so minus 4 that's 0 so y is 0 10 plus plus so uh, 10 decreases by 1 so minus 3 and x equals to x plus 1 so 0 plus 1 plus n that's 4 and sum equals to sum 0 plus x which is 4 plus y that's 0 so sum is so sum equals to sum sum is we go to the child class first so child class that's 5 plus x one thing that i forgot to write here was 3 which is because remember when we created b1 we had to go to the parents constructor and do this so i forgot this line which is sum equals to 10 plus 1 so sum temp was 2 back then so 2 plus 1 that would be 3 which we have written over here okay so sorry about that anyway so sum equals to so we are here and sum equals to 3 plus x that's 7 and plus y that is 0 so sum is 7 so our output would be x plus y x y and sum so 4 y is 0 and sum so let's just mark them down so 4 0 and 7 okay so we are done with method a so we were called from here we're done with this sum equals to x plus y plus sum so sum equals to 5 uh, so 5 plus x is 1 that's 6 and y that's 3 so 6 plus 3 that's 9 and we print out x which is 1 y which is 3 and 9 so let's mark them down again 1 3 and 9 so we're done with <coughs> creating b2 completely done now we are going for b1 dot method a where we, the parameters are 1 and 2 okay so method a the parameters are 1 and 2 okay so we go to method a x is 0 again y equals to y plus m so y is 0 plus m that's 1 plus 10 plus plus so minus 3 plus 1 that's minus 2 so y is basically minus 2 okay and 10 plus plus so temp would be minus 2 here x equals to x plus 1 so 0 plus 1 that's 1 
plus 2 that's 3 and sum equals to sum which was 7 plus x that's 3 so that's 10 plus y y is minus 2 so that this would give us 8 and the output would be x which is 3 y which is minus 2 and sum which is 8 so let's just mark them down so 3 minus 2 and 8 these are our outputs and method A doesn't call anything or do anything so we are done with method A now we go to the last one so b2 dot method b so method b passes two parameters 3 and 2 and y equals to 0 y equals to y so this one plus this y this y refers to the parent which is minus 4 so 0 uh, plus minus 4 that would give us minus 4 then x equals to this y again minus 4 plus 2 so that's minus 2 plus 10 minus 2 that's minus 4 so x equals to minus 4 then we pass on x and y so minus 4 and minus 4 to method a so minus 4 and minus 4 to method a and inside method a we are doing x equals to 0 y equals to y so y is minus 4 plus m that's minus 8 plus 10 so that's like minus 10 so y is minus 10 we decrease temp so or, or, or increase temp by 1 so that becomes minus 1 so then x equals to x so 0 plus 1 that's 1 plus n that's minus 4 plus 1 that's minus 3 then sum equals to minus 1 minus 3 that's minus 4 plus y that's minus 14 then we print it out so x minus 3 minus 10 and minus 14 let's just mark them down so minus 3 minus 10 and 14 so we're done with method a we go back to method b from the place where we were called this one then sum equals to x plus y plus sum so x is minus 4 plus y that's minus 4 that's 8 and plus sum so 8 plus 5 that's minus 3 and print out so x is minus 4 y is minus 4 and we do sum that's minus 3 and these are, are our output so this is the whole tracing of inheritance hope you guys did understand uh, the video and how I did the tracing and if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to comment down below and please do subscribe. Thank you.